Hello everybody, this is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemo, this is Christopher Draves, and this is Matt Weiss. Two for two. <gasps> yeah. We got it again. Yep. Keep it up and I'll buy you a pizza. Hey, you heard him. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, he wants a, uh, what you call it, topper. Oh, no, no, right. I want Marcos. Okay. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. All Not right, sponsored. Not about sponsored. About Not sponsored. But who are we sponsored by, Dan? These guys. Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, you could get go there, drop off your skates uh, for any time of the day. Any time of the day. Yeah, yeah they have a drop-off slot. You could go over there, drop off your skates. Leave your contact information, though, because you need to get those skates back. And yeah. uh, you also need money in order for you to get them back. Yes. They're not true. They're no. not going to send you shoelaces in the mail, though, if you don't if you don't send them their payments. But yeah, exactly. just, just you, They'll you, send it to you in pieces. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. I said just kidding. Just kidding. But uh, no, they got uh, what is it? They got all sorts of hockey gear. Uh, they got figure skating gear as well. They got officiating gear, pads from top to bottom. They got they nothing. NHL to... jerseys, you know, old, oh, old yeah. jerseys. Oh yeah, throwback jerseys. I'm sure you can get a Hartford Whalers jersey. Probably, you can get customized. You could get a nice, wonderful hockey locker T-shirt, so you could match us. That's true. Yep. You can't get that shirt. That's not hockey locker. Yeah. Nope. Uh, this shirt, you had to go to the Admirals game. Speaking of which, for their upcoming promo for another one like this, you could get a cinch sack with this logo yeah. on it. It's a, it's a pretty Ooh. sweet logo. It's our fifty-fifty. Is it's our? Was it? We got the fiftieth golden anniversary of the Brewers, and we got the fiftieth golden anniversary of the Admirals. Yeah. It's a sweet gig. Yep. So that was our uh, that was our thing for hockey locker. Bye. Say bye to the say bye to the, the shield, everybody. Bye. So because we are doing a trade talk, we give hockey locker because they're hockey locker. Sponsors. They're our sponsors. We give them their plug. Yep. But just, this is we're gonna go over the oh, okay over the last couple of days of trades. Because we haven't done one since the 11th. Fair note, if Dan's phone goes off, there's a good reason for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, well, forewarning, if you hear, why you have to be mad, it's only game, means that there was some form of inter, uh, action on Twitter. Therefore, that's the only notification I have on currently, so I can pay attention to what, what us media journalists call the week of hell. Yep. Because well, this is trade week. It's trade week, and it's not only it's not only uh, heck, it's not only hell for uh, journalists. It's hell for hockey fans too. Like if you want someone to go, and you're if you want someone to go, or if you want someone to stay, that's on the trade block. You're basically on the edge of your seat. Just yeah, like, hockey eh. fans, blood pressure. And uh, just imagine where us team. Nashville fans are at right now. Uh, All right, so let's just talk about this one real quick. It's Andy Green for David Quinville and a second round pick in 2021. Thoughts? Uh, Andy Green, solid stay at home defenseman. David Quinville, don't know much about him, but I do know he was playing for the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, and they're doing pretty good. Yep. So. Yeah, uh, Quinville went to the Devils from Islanders. Correct. So I, I call it a uh, it fills a hole for the Islanders that they need. So. But the Devils just got a second round pick in 2021, which. It's always helpful to have multiple picks, correct? Yeah, I mean, Nashville does right now, so yeah. I doubt I see any of those moving based on if they stay pat where they're at, which well, I would if I were them. And this all happened on my birthday, guys. It's amazing. All right. all right, and then we have Blake Coleman from New Jersey, who was the top scorer mm -hmm. for a first-round pick from Vancouver and Nolan Foote. From Tampa Bay. From Tampa Bay. Now, I don't know how Cal Foote's going to feel about this who happens to be his older brother, who plays for Tampa Bay. Right. Eh. But we'll see what happens. I could probably see Tampa Bay trading him, too, for somebody. Um, that doesn't really help Tampa Bay. They don't need scoring help. They need defensive help, but we'll leave that alone. Why do they still have a week? All right, we got Tyler Toffoli for Tim Schaller, Tyler Madden, the second-round pick and a conditional fourth. <sighs> I like got a haul for Toffoli. Yes. I never realized Toffoli was that valuable. Well, Toffoli's a good two-way forward. He'll put the puck in the net. He'll stop mm -hmm. and block pucks. He'll pass. He'll do whatever you need him to do. Coach tells him what to do. He goes out and does it. Well, yes. I hope Vancouver utilizes Toffoli. That's the thing, though. I think this, uh, is, a, this is a good playoff push uh, pickup. For L.A. or for Vancouver? For Vancouver, in my honest opinion. All right. All right. This was a minor league trade. Joey Keane for Julian Gauthier. 
So we got uh, Gautier. Charlotte Checkers and the uh, Bridgeport Sound Tigers. Yeah. Uh, no, Hartford Wolfpack. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Yeah, uh, Sound Tigers. I got Sound the Tigers Island. are the Islanders. Island. Yep. All right. So another fire sale in Ottawa. Dylan DeMello for a third round in 2020. Yeah, I think Ottawa got Ottawa. gypped. But I do laugh because Ottawa does have San Jose's first. And San Jose yeah. get to have a very high lottery pick. So, yeah, like, it, it, DeMello was replaceable. Yeah, that's true. All right, uh, Brendan Dillon for San Jose for a second round pick and a conditional third to Washington. That was today. Hmm. Well, I'm ready. Um, that does show up their defense because God knows they need help there. This one. This uh, one's going to hurt for Minnesota fans. Um, as a guy who watched the Wild when I lived in Duluth, even though I'm a Preds fan, when I was living up there, I'd wear my Preds gear and I'd get ripped to shreds every day. But um, they traded uh, for Mark. Montreal traded Scandal to St. Louis. For a second round pick and a conditional fourth if St. Louis makes it beyond the first round. I always call them Mini Marco. Like Minnesota Marco. But man, that's. And again, adding another. Uh, Valuable, like like a valuable skater to the, was it to the squad? That's really gonna like do do exactly as your coach says. Because Marco is also a guy that would basically is like a, the the Foley uh, kind of player where he. But he's a defenseman. Yeah. So, all right. So let's take a look at this, which is where he's gonna go ape and ballistic later on. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about that. All right, so let's talk about Chris Kreider first off. He's uh, 28 years old, 53 games played, 23 goals, 42 points. He does carry a cap hit of four, four, almost $5 million. So we'll see where that goes. Um, where do you think he'll land? I mean, at this point, it's kind of one of those, you look at the contenders and you figure out where he's going to land. Who needs him? Uh, who's in need for... Two-way scoring forward. Yeah, that's... That's because again, there's like there's, that's one of those I wouldn't be surprised to see Columbus. Yeah, yeah. Like, because they're still struggling in the the wild card race right now, and this could be like again, that could be something that could pick them up. I guess it, it's just really hard because it's really hard to pick out who's in like like who in the league would vie for it the most. All right, the, next, the guy I have the biggest question is who in the world is going to go after Ilya Kovalchuk? He's 36. He does have very little cap hit. I, yeah, that's the only plus to him. That's someone you plug in just for a veteran on the bench. Yeah. I mean, I guess. But his, that would his be something surprised I see Nashville taking a chance on. And I'm just saying, because like his low cap hits like his only upside. Because would he trade for a 36-year-old Dan if you were a GM? At this point, not for that sake of it, but for the for the for for a team in need of a veteran in their locker room who's yeah. over thirty, um, that would be beneficial. But like Locker's. seeing as like for Nashville, like you have it already in Pex, uh, so there's really like unless if you need someone that's because again there's people that can do all of it as a veteran, like uh, goalie goalie that- defenseman skater. Uh, a goalie defense but they go but, but the thing with Nashville is they don't really have a veteran forward. That's the, the thing. Exactly. Like even Duchesne's young. Right. Compared to like some of the other guys you see on this list. Right. He's only 26, 27, so you know, you you have years then, on top of years left of him. Then you'd have to deal with the scratches issue. Yeah. Which at that point would be beneficial to Nashville because they would be able to stack Milwaukee again. Exactly. And then give them more uh, time to develop, which is what they're good at. Well, the, more importantly for like the Milwaukee and the Florida sense is like both of these teams are going into the playoffs, and that's going to give them the ability. Like Florida is going to get the advantage to get people that are going to start pushing for the AHL uh, play, like state, uh, like you know, state of play or state of play, because the AHL is a little bit more rough and tough than the UCHL, and then basically uh, called the Cup playoff is basically a good way to go into the NHL. Um, and then slowly on towards uh, about March or so, we're going to have to talk about who's going to come in as uh, um, amateur tryouts, too. That's right. For Nashville. So That's coming in. 
So that's coming too. We got to talk about that. So other thing, uh, Sammy Votnin, um, he is a right-handed defenseman. Uh, he carries a lot of uh, offensive prowess with him. He doesn't have the goals to show up for it, but he does have 23 points. So he gets a lot of assists, and sometimes that's all you need, especially when you're on the defense. Nashville doesn't, outside of Yossi, they don't really have a setup guy for defense outside of Ellis. And with, no. as long as Ellis is on IR, they need that spot. And so just, who would uh, New Jersey want in exchange for Vodman then? They want their stuff back that they got for PK. <laughs> <laughs> Could you see them going for Ellie? Yes, but they'd have to give up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. More to do with Because the only, I, doubt they're looking to do that. The, the only reason I bring up Ellie, and I know Dan knows why I'm bringing it up, is that Ellie right now is incredibly hot with the Admirals right now. Like, it, like he's not smoking, like, blistering hot, but... He's not Daniel Carr in the no. beginning of the year hot, but he is he has definitely picked up his game in the last month. Yeah. Well, he was on, he was on fire in, uh, in December. Yeah. Like, he had a solid December, uh... Had Every other month or so. <laughs> he was starting to pick, he was really picking it up mid-November, but like December he had a really uh, breakout month. Is he, he one of those players that's known for just picking and choosing his spots when he's going to heat up, Ellis? Ellie Tolvanen? El oh, Ellis? Oh, Ellie Tolvanen. Ellie Are you saying Ellie? I thought that was a nickname for Ryan Ellis. Oh, God, that would be confusing. <laughs> but no, uh, Ellie, like, for Ellie Tolvanen, like, again, it just took him a while to get into his form. He's probably, he's definitely a lot better than his uh, his brother. I can't remember we were talking uh, about. Ate. Ate, yeah. Ate Tolvin, and he's a goalie over in Sweden. Yep. He's definitely Why better. If Preds would need defense, what did New Jersey need? Would they pick an offensive player like Ellie Tolvin? Pick a position. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's pick a position. They, you pick a position, and that's what they need. They need goaltending. They need mm -hmm. forwards. They True. need. You know, pick a position right now. Because I don't know their situation in Binghamton with the Devils. Because I don't know how well they're doing in the league, honestly. But, again, just as like I, saw, I said earlier, it's basically to reiterate, pick a position, really. Like, I know that Mackenzie Blackwood has a lot of prop uh, uh, um, potential. And, oh, God. Getting overwhelmed by the AHL.com. <laughs> Doesn't take much. Like That's coming from personal experience. No, you just see creating special bond in San Antonio, and it makes you just go, oh, man. Yeah, that's a, that's another rant on its own. Yeah, yeah, it is. So we're going to take a look at the Devils till the last I knew they were towards the bottom of the league. So, yeah, Binghamton's currently sixth in the, the AHL North. But they're climbing. Yeah, like right now, there's they're only, what is it, two point, like... Uh, yeah, they have a three-game win streak currently. They're two to three points away from climbing to the fourth spot. Like, again, so the AHL North is in the wash yet. Not as bad as, like, maybe, like, what we are in the AHL Central, where it's really just a rat race between uh, the Admirals and Iowa. Yeah, in the Central, it's just, it is. And they've got some talent there with uh, Michael McLeod. You've got uh, uh, Marion Studnik. Uh, you have uh, Jasper, Jasper Volquist. Oh, another Sissons. You have Colton Sissons' little brother, actually. Colby. You would be perfect for Wisconsin. Um, and then you have David Quinville, you have, and then in net, you got Corey Schneider and Gilly Shen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like. They're oh, they're assistant coaches of former Admiral. Ryan Parent. Yeah. Huh. So, you know, they've got some stuff down there in the junior, in, in their minor league system where they can, they can, they'll be okay in the next couple of years. Oh, yeah. All right. So outside of that. You also look at guys like Kyle Palmieri. Palmieri's been good for, doesn't matter whether his team's good or not. Um, he has one year left on his deal, so I don't know if they're going to trade him now or they're going to hold him until next year. Because I wouldn't be surprised if they did just to stay above cap. That could be true. I don't see anybody that would be this desperate to pick him up for a playoff run. Um, outside of that, you got Mike Hoffman, who... Um, 
was a cancer in Ottawa's locker room, but haven't heard anything from Florida, so I think it was just an argument between the two players. Ooh, let me know when we get to number 16, please. I'm, I'm get curious to hear what you got to say about number 12 and 13 on the list. Oh, oh. San Jose, Patrick Marlowe, and Joe Thornton. They're both Thornton, 40. Thornton. Thornton, I've been hearing Boston. Really? Yes. Oh, that would fit their rap, repertoire, what, bleh, repertoire perfectly, too. Yeah, but who would want a 40-year-old, though? I know it's Jumpin' Joe, Joe, and he's good at 40, but still. Jumpin' you, you Joe, again. You don't tie yourself to something that old. Just talking about what we were talking about earlier with veteran presence. That's it. And here's the well, other thing. What about Patrick Marlowe, then? His same cap thing is same. attractive, 700000 Here's the thing with Joe Thornton that, that Marlowe does not carry, and this is that. Thornton has cup experience. Yes. He, Ed Marlowe does not. No, he don't. Joe was and did start with, to my recollection, he played a couple years with Boston before. I don't remember when this was, but I remember seeing a Thornton on Boston back in the early days. look it up. You keep it at home. But what I'm saying is, San Jose is going to be complete fire sale. Anyone they can get an offer for, they're going to take because they've got to make up in this draft. This draft, for the first two rounds, like last year's, is deep. Yeah. So San Jose really got to get are their we, crap together. Are we talking about I just a, wanted to hear your thoughts on Marlo and Thornton because Sean Age and Marlo huh? has a good cap. Sean Thornton, hit. okay. So I'm hoping it could benefit them. But here's the also thing. He wants a cup. Doesn't care how he gets it. Yep. Nobody expected San Jose to fall as far as they did. Yeah, everybody's so oh. used to San Jose being like a seven or an eight seed because they'd seem to flounder toward the bottom. Well, then and they what is it? They basically got rid of Pavelski, which I still think is one of the greatest mistakes they ever made. Yeah. Because the now... most current and consistent guy I ever see on the trade block, right there, Derek, Derek Grant. Grant. 29 years old, but traded seven times at the deadline. Ow. I wonder why. Wow. All right, so we got, at 15, we got Barclays Goudreau. So just another another pass off from the Sharks. All right, let him have it. All Robin right. Leonard. You know, give the guy whatever he wants at this point. He's earned it. He's earned it. Chicago hasn't figured it out. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is like this is personal Milwaukee Chicago bias here because I don't care for Chicago. No, you're actually sticking up for Leonard, though. That's I'm sticking up for him because the Crawford what he's been is through, yeah. what he's been through, with what he went through in Ottawa, what he went through at Buffalo, which was not his for, fault, no. nor was it Buffalo's fault. No. Well, and Which fault was it then? The owners. Ownership. Ain't that no. Buffalo's fault? No, that you can't blame the coaching staff. No, you can't. You can't blame. No, the, you said it's not Buffalo's fault. Well, if the when, owner is I'm the a, fault, because if I say it's Buffalo's Buffalo. fault, you put that on the fans too. Yeah, but but when I say ownership, I mean like yeah, okay. They didn't right. want to pay him. I get what you say. Here's the thing with Robin Leonard. Like this is this would have been he's been consistent th- everywhere he went. Yes, uh-huh. he's been consistent, and right now Chicago has a goaltending problem. They have a goaltending problem down in Rockford, like not to besmirch our friends in Rockford, but their goaltending is not consistent at all. And no, I, they're running a rotation of three in Rockford right yeah, now. Yeah, they there's no consistency right now because they don't know who is going to be hot and who's 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 not. So they're literally given a gift with Robin Leonard, but they're still choosing to to go with Crawford. And this is the same problem they had when Scott Darling came to them. It was literally a gift to them in the playoffs. Yeah. And they still sided with, with Corey Crawford, which I... Which got them bounced in yes. the first round by Nashville. That's pretty much loyalty killing them then. Because they're loyal And this is, uh, this is what it comes down to. The GM... Guess who the GM is? Who? The GM's the owner. So it's Rocky he's a, Wirtz. He's one of those owner GM teams. Rocky Wirtz. That's never good. Rocky oh, Wirtz. no, no. The owner is... Uh, the GM is... Um, oh, God, what's his name? Uh, what Bowman? Bowman. Okay, but he's pretty buddy buddy with Rocky. Yeah, that's the thing that we've no. There, what isn't he like co-owner anyway? 
Well, again, it's the Wirtz family that owns the the majority stake of the. Of yeah, the but he has a minority ownership. Yeah. So you have a a minority owner as GM, and you're not going forward. And you think that Patrick Kane and Taves are going to carry you, dude? They're thirty years old on a nine million dollar contract. Get out of those so you can start rebuilding properly. Because you're already suffering it in your AHL franchise, and I can't speak I can't speak for the Indy Fuel and the EA, ECHL, their affiliate, but like. They're they they have a goaltending problem, they do, and Robbie was that Robin Leonard would be a, a a nice transition away from Crawford and having to pay that. Here's much the thing: you could him. you could trade away Crawford and call up Delia at this point and pay Delia the million and have him back up Leonard and only make him play like once a week. Well, the thing the thing with that right now is Chicago's still thinking that they can play for the playoffs. That's it. <laughs> again, Chicago. Hey, hey, again, hey, you, you know it's Chicago. true, Dan. You know it's true. They're thinking that they can play for the wild card still. And yeah, still but that's not going to help because you sat here and said last year, oh, we're in a rebuild. Yeah. But again, they're one year rebuild. Like I don't know what the hell they're doing. One year. Here, look, let's put it this way. How well is the one year rebuild? How well did that work for Minnesota? It didn't work. At all. It's still working. <laughs> Now it's worse. They actually have to do a complete rebuild. Yeah, it should be another five years of wasted while. Because now you're done with the coach, but like, are, are, what, what GM are they even on right now? I can't even keep track. GM number four? In the last ten. Good Wait, lord. The what? Wild are on yeah. GM number four in the last ten years. You gotta wonder if that's an ownership issue. Yeah, probably. All right, so then that's, we have. That's definitely an issue. So then we have two, a pair of uh, wild defensemen, Yotis Bernin and Matt Dumba. Yeah. Dumba, like, that's a throwaway if I ever saw one. Jonas Bernin, though, that's... He shows flashes. Both of them have another year to two year, or uh, Bernin has one year, Dumba has three. They overpaid Matt Dumba way too much. Yeah, because he's a uh, six mil cap hit. Six mil cap with three left. Ow. Um, so there's that. It's probably difficult for them to get rid of Dumbo. Exactly. So they're stuck with that, or they're stuck with bad contracts. And I blame that on with the GM who keeps on. Any like because I was like people like oh they can rotate into Iowa. There's no way you're gonna get him to rotate down there. Nah. You're, you're no, he'll get claimed. Exactly. Yeah. All right, and then we have Rasmus Ristolainen for Buffalo. Oh, two they years. got Ristolainen on there. Yeah, two Why? years left, five point four. He wants out. Yep. Okay. He requested to be traded and yeah, said ownership. that if you don't trade him, I'm walking to overseas. Ownership. Oh, oh. Uh oh. We, we've got a we've dumb. got a we've got a tweet update. We've got a tweet update, everybody. It better not be something dumb. Rockford's mad. We're cleared. <laughs> like I said, probably something dumb. <laughs> Rockford's mad. Ma- Rockford's mad? mad about losing. Oh, well, oh. I, can, I, can, I can understand that. Yeah, I'm mad that the Predators got spanked too, but it happens. All right, so I'm going to not talk about Craig Smith getting traded because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't think well, there's, there's any reason to talk about block. it. I As, mean, the, the, the reason why it might be like why... Grandland... It would have to literally knock the Preds' socks off. That's just it. Same thing, Same with, thing with Grandlin because they let's put it this way, in the last week there's no two hotter players in the NHL. Right. Because again, and, uh, Kyle, Ovechkin's gone ice cold over the last five. Who oh, Ovechkin? Yeah. yeah. He hasn't scored in his last five games. Well again, yeah. there's so much pressure on him. Alright, so we got Rocco Grimaldi for Nashville. Which again I Here's the see thing. That working. I he has a perfect cap number, and he's that's just he, it. He's that's worth right more, picking. in my opinion, because he is playing really good. But did, lately, he hasn't done much besides who, the assists. Who did we acquire him from? Oh, uh, free agency. Free, okay, so he was playing like he was playing solid. All right, so the one lucky. thing I can see Nashville getting rid of is Kyle Turris's six million dollar cap hit, and okay. I can see them eating some of it. That's Facebook. Okay. <laughs> okay. But no, like he was, it sounded like he was also upset with, again, because apparently Terrace knows something that we don't, because he stormed out of the, what is it, he stormed out of the locker room when the GM showed up? Yeah. And GM told him something, so if anything does happen, we'll bring it to you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I've been hearing rumors that he was not happy in the locker room. And well, he stormed out. 
Yeah. And, uh, 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 maybe he did. Uh, maybe he found out. If the predators traded for Hoffman, that would so make sense. <laughs> He's angry for the rest of us. <laughs> no, because he and Hoffman had the fight oh. in oh. Ottawa. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that would be a slap in the face. Ouch. Which, in that case, means Terrace has gone by what? By, by Thursday? Possibly. <laughs> Where we don't even need to talk about the whole Pooley RV deal. We already went on a No, no, that no video, that's the one we're talking about. That one, remember, that video went kaput. We went kaput, but it, it benefited us because a lot happened over this week. I just hope, yeah, we did benefit. All right. Stuff. All right. Go ahead. You can start with the Jesse no, Pulley no, RV. Thing. Me in. You leave All right. Me in. So Jesse Pulley RV. Uh, I'm going to give you a little backstory here. All right. McDavid was told you could pay a pay cut and we'll give you 10 million, so that we could sign Pulley RV for five. Or you could take the 12 million and we can't pay anybody and not build around you. He goes, give me more money. Therefore, leaving Jesse Pugliarvi, a very competitive young player at 21 years old, now stuck on RFA with Edmonton unable to pay him what he deserves, and he's not going to take less than that just to make them happy, because guess what? Nowadays, that's exactly it. Players are not going to take less than what they deserve no. just to make the team happy. Now, if they're happy and where they're at, yeah, they'll take home down discounts. Yeah. But they're not happy. So Pugliarvi goes, trade me. He and the SHL has 20, 18 goals, 44 points, and 46 games. And, and you're wasting him. Uh, this, too bad you don't got stats of what he has done in the pull NHL up the stats. like we did last no, video. Pull, up, pull up the stats. Office. Go ahead. This is, like, while you go on that, I'm going to go on this. That way we could further prove your point yes. why uh, Pooley RV is This is guy. one of the reasons why I I hate the current cap configuration. Sure. They're going to raise it again this year. Well, too. they're going to raise it, but this is how you abuse play. This is how this is basically player abuse in a sense because you're not giving them the attention you need. And when you get guys that are like money getting, hungry, well, they're not. No, not. I wouldn't even say it's money hungry, but these are prospects that are. NHL stars in the making. Well, here's the thing. When I said what, what my biggest issue is, okay, when you look at it, if you sit here and tell me that Pooley RV, uh, you couldn't sit there and go, I'm sorry, Cassian, I can't pay you the $5 million. Do Would you mind being bought out this year? And he goes, yeah, pay me now. But the whole thing with the McDavid, and then he be, ends up being a black mark on your on your team all season, but yeah. being suspended for half the year. Yeah, so I say, could read off what he's done in the NHL. All right, NHL so I'm just gonna this. read real quick. This is elite prospect scouting report of them. Pulley RV is a big winger who combines sky, size, skill, and space. Uh, size. Skating and skill. A strong skater who can blast past the opposition at 6'4", use his size and reach to stick handle, and a smart player at both ends of the ice. The last time I checked, they have an issue with that in Edmonton. But, you know. No. Um, um, on both, and plays on both ends of the puck. Um, he has a great has a great work ethic, a positive attitude, and more of a playmaker than score. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful to, for somebody to feed McDavid? Who's on IR, if I recall. Um, and could improve his shooting skills. Although equipped with an accurate release, does not shy away from physical play and could use his size to benefit even more. Well, let's just look at his stats in the NHL. Okay, yeah. Give me these numbers that you know that Edmonton doesn't want me to see because apparently. All right. So in his first year in the NHL, he played for 39 for the Bakersfield Condors in the AHL, 12 goals, 16 assists for 28 points in 39 games with a minus two. Oh, but wait! Once he got to the NHL, he scored one goal, seven assists for eight points, and a plus five. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing. That's not a bad start. And then his next year, they sent him back for another 10 games, 5 points, a minus 2. But then they called him up for 65 games, 12 goals, 8 assists, or 20 points, and had a minus 1 during a year where they ended up 
botching everything. Not the, his fault. Then the next year they botched even more and only played him for 46 games, four goals, five assists, nine points, and a minus 14. So they kind of left him out there to dry. But then when he sent him to Bakersfield, oh, two goals, two assists, four points, he barely got to play. This is... Why they aren't playing no, him? They're not playing him, and they're like, how do you expect him to develop in your league if he's not playing in Bakersfield? Look at this number right here. What did they draft him? Twenty sixteen. Round one, number four overall, twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Look at those accolades right there. He's being wasted. Jun- World Juniors twenty gold medal. World Juniors eighteen gold medal. Oh. World Juniors uh, eighteen. Uh, uh, what was that, the international one? I think so. Gold medal. Uh, what was that, the... Uh... Finnish Cup. Yeah, he yeah. is a one-time Finnish he's Cup a, champion. He's a... Was a, he's a, a, was a Liga? Yeah. Yeah, he's a Liga champion. What are you doing with them, Edmonton? You're blatantly wasting this guy away! It's okay. We we have. I mean, he's still young, so I know, whoever does get him is going to be good. But it doesn't make sense that he's not in the system right here in the ECHL. Let's if... just look at his NHL stats overall. This is why I wanted Dane to bring up the stats so yeah. we can drive home the fact that All right, guys in Liga, 117 games played, 35 goals, 48 assists for 83 points, and a plus 33. Okay. In the NHL, playing on a team that doesn't play defense in Edmonton, he still has a minus 10. What, you, are, you, what are you doing, Edmonton? You don't care about what you're doing in the future? Your future is fine? Oh, wait. What was that right there? The Gretzky Cup. He had five points in four games. You are... Deliberately taking a guy that could be your knight in shining armor, your fran- your your franchise rock in the future, and you are sending him away out of your system completely. I don't even know if Edmonton does have an ECHL team because there are six vacancies, and I'm not as in tune with the ECHL as I want to be. He should be in Bakersfield, and he's not. He's being wasted completely by this organization and the fact that you know Edmonton's I understand Edmonton's doing like what they're doing fine this year yeah they're doing fine but they're not developing him in their in their system at all how are how is he supposed to get better for them if they're not going to work with him it, it this is this is one thing that you know baffles me as a hockey fan where you would think that this is a, the time and place that you would work something out to ensure that you're one of your ace players in the making can become better. <laughs> Sorry. What? Independent. Independent. I don't get it. They can't even get it in it. Okay. The Wichita Thunder. The Wichita Thunder. You're telling me he can't play in Wichita. You're telling me you can't pay him? Get him you couldn't have slapped an RFA tag and made him go to arbitration? This is just poor management. And we're about to make that guy our AHL president. Yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, like, I know we can't, I'm not going to say much on it, but yeah, this is the, the guy that is uh, going to be the new AHL uh, president and CEO the same person that's in charge of the Edmonton Oilers player development. That doesn't reflect well on the AHL, in my personal opinion. That doesn't reflect anything on our sponsor. But that's on me, and I'm just going, how does this help this how does this help your product too? Now that you're in charge gonna be in charge of this thing. How does this help the NHL if that's your mindset? All right. So we're talking here about trades, and we got through this. Let's jump off this topic and talk about just what Nashville needs. Proceed. All right. So Alec Martinez is one of the top things that they're talking about right now because he brings a veteran defense, and he can go into the top four and play with somebody along with, like, Ellis or Yossi or Ekholm and be consistent. True. 
Right now he's with Drew Doughty, and Doughty, they did not play today, so they held him out. All right. The others who could be traded, because they're talking right now that Granlin and Smith would be at the top of the list, but Heil, it would, it, here's the thing, it would be a tough decision for, for Poyle to make. Well, not only that, like, I think if people were asking for Craig Smith, they'd want, they'd want more. Yeah. Like, I, right. I don't see, I don't see them getting, or axing Mikhail in any, or Mikhail in any way. Like, that I don't think that it, he's gelling too much right now. He, he got another point today, so... Um, with that being said, they do leave Nick Benino and Kyle Turris with their big cap hits that they are, and the Preds need to open up some. Yeah. And g- giving with how uh, Kyle Turris uh, behaved today at the end uh, by throwing out a locker room, as we just said, uh, it could be that something was just made to his attention that could possibly crack this open. Yeah. Uh, that, and this is the, 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 listen to me when I say that. That was speculation, and what I heard yes. from a a somebody who saw him in, running out of the locker room, which in you Bridgestone. can see in Bridgestone. When you're in Bridgestone, down in the uh, was that the the Lexus Lounge, yeah. you can see the locker room from there. So if there were people down there, and he stormed out, that's why I'm seeing that tweet. Okay. So I don't know what happened in the it's, locker room. It's nothing ironclad. It's just something that was passed on. Yeah, we're we're only going off of what we hear and see. We're not making any claims. Well, yeah. at, this, at this point, we can we can only like at, it's at a this rumor point. Right now. At this it's point, it's based off of a rumor, and the only assumption we can make off of that is that something it's something trade related. So yeah, Possibly. I was just like, you know, if that rumor's true. If he wanted to get out of there, and he ran out of there, he was like, "I'm getting traded." Woo! Bye. He'd hold a, what is it, he'd put a white towel on the top of his stick and run out. Yep. He'd be like, I'm free. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. When he came to Nashville, he didn't really do much in his first year. Let's just take a look at Turris here. Because Turris, before coming to Nashville... I just want to say, I feel so much better after letting all that rant out. Good Lord. Come on, Edmondson, get your stuff together. And this is why they'll be rebuilding in five years. With McDavid. Yeah. And wasting him like, uh, I hate to say this, the Capitals did with Ovechkin. For a period of time. Then again, when you have the Penguins in your division, it doesn't make it any easier. Nope. All right, so we're going to take a look at Kyle Terrace real quick, because we all know what Nick Bonino can do. Okay. He was a third, first round pick, third overall by the Coyotes. Two way center. I have yet to see that part of him. He's a big rampage guy, too. But that was when they were uh, with the Coyotes. Oh, yes, and he is a. Uh, he is a banjer. He played for the. For a year. Yep. All right, so let's just take a look at it. In his years with Ottawa, he was averaging anywhere between. Okay, that one was an injury year, so I kind of got to take that out. Um, That was 60 points, 55, so anywhere between 59-ish points. And then he comes to Nashville, plays 63 games, 65 games, gets 42 points in a plus 22. That was the, uh, what? Dang you. That was the cup run, if I remember correctly. Now, I have heard, I've heard heavy rumor that Detroit is really interested in him. Really? And the reason why is they want him to play with Anthony Mantha. Because of what happened here. Oh. Oh. Good old World Cup. Yep. Yeah. So they had him on a line with Mantha at the World Cup, and he lit it up. Um, this year so far, he's played in 51 games, which he's about to hit his mark for last year in games, and he's at 28 points. I think a, a change of scenery is needed badly. Well, if it benefits the Preds, too. And, and uh, I, I think... How old is he? 
Out of curiosity? He should be around 30. He is 30. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, and we're going to take a look and see what Detroit has to offer because right now, as far as I know, it's the only guys that they have on the trade block is Anthony Ciu and Mike Green, and it's going to take both of them to pry Terrace away. I wonder who they can even deplete from Grand Rapids. If any. Hicketts. Okay, let's not do that one. That's a, that's an editorial on its own. <laughs> I will wait for watching him yell and scream and then kind of be happy at the same time we don't have to see him against us anymore. There aren't any step ladders that could help you with that. <laughs> <sighs> guess is a five foot eight defenseman, sorry. Okay. If <laughs> TSN could be nice to me for a second. Well, everybody's on it right now. Everybody's freaking out. <laughs> Yeah, TSN's going to crash. Not that I'm trying to be mean to TSN or anything. TSN's better. Yeah, everyone goes to TSN because you can literally look up latest rumors and find out what's going on. And it's just got that nice, it's got that nice, like, Canadian feel to it, too. All right, so like I said, when we take a look at that, because I have heard, I, I've been, we said that in the beginning of the year, we've had heard tourists in Detroit, and we're hearing it again. So there's... Where there's smoke, it's normally fire. All right, so we got Andreas Anthony to see you, 25 years old, 44 games played, 8 goals, 22 points, and he's an RFA at the end of the year with a $3 million cap hit. With that being an RFA, I can see that being a safe move for the Predators, as well as they have Detroit's cap space. They have a ton of it. <laughs> um, Mike Green... Green. With two goals, nine points, and 34 years Ouch. old. Ouch. Veteran defenseman, but that he carries. cap hit's going to scare people. Yeah, or a five yeah but you three, get, with, no. here's the thing. With the cap space they have, they would be willing to eat some of it. Yes. Yeah. Because. Because he's clearly underperforming for a guy making that much money a year. Well, let's go to our good old friend. Cause well, underperforming, but then again, who is in, the, in Detroit right now? Everybody's kind of floundering. Uh, because this is the last topic we're talking about. And then we'll be uh, out of here. Can't really sit back because of the green screen, so my back's hurt from being hunched over this long. All right. So they are... Currently... Oof, right at the cap. Yeah. So they don't have space. No. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rock in a hard place? Yeah, yeah. pretty much, because he's overpaid for what he's producing, and they can't eat anything to get rid of him. They so pretty much stuck with get it. rid of him. <laughs> so, I mean, in that case, if you do trade somebody like Antanasiu, in order to take a guy like Turris, you're going to have to give up Mike Green to open said space. Oof. No. No. He is so not worth that. No. Who are you looking at? Jonathan Bernier, three million. No. Uh, Long term injury. Ouch. That right there, those two. Yeah. Buyout history, they got a, another set of. So they've got issues to come. But. This is where it gets interesting for them. Their cap hit next year is $45 million. So they can take the cap penalty this year. Yep. Because if you look at their trade deadline cap, mm -hmm. it's $12 million. Yeah. True. Without a penalty. Yeah. So without a cap hit... Well, again, and Detroit could afford it. <laughs> yeah. So... Their relief usage is ten million. Again. So they have ten million in relief. Yep. In cap. And they have twelve million remaining. Mm-hmm. So they'll be fine. They're probably gonna want a second round pick if we're taking green, so I'd just give them Nashville's and and keep, you know, New Jersey's because well, we know yeah. how Yeah. Unless they're going to give you something else, and, and, and for them, they don't have much. And for in their case, um, 
Yeah, I mean, Denny to Kaiser has a no trade clause. Let's take a look at those two because that does add into things. You have Mike Green, no, modified no trade clause. Oh, they have to. He had to give a ten team list. Really? Yep. So he can only go to ten select teams. So in that case, you're you're kind of looking at. Do you want to give up? Up. Oh, he has a full no trade clause. I mean, you, you kind of overpaid Franz Nielsen, Justin Aptogator, uh Darren Helm, uh, Anthony Mantha's underpaid. Dylan Larkin's overpaid for as young as he is. Uh, Jonathan Erickson overpaid at 35. Uh, and Trevor Daly overpaid. So you, you kind of have to... Detroit's between a rock and a hard place. Looking at what they have in their, in their system, the only thing, little pieces they have to give up are McElrath, Hicketts on the defensive side, Larson and uh, Calvin Pickard. Those have some cap-friendly contracts. Um, and then you have Vili Halona, Evgeny Shvechnikov. You have your talent in Grand Rapids. Call them up, let them show you what you got. You know, um, what's the character from... Uh, uh, God, uh... Your favorite Cartoon Network late night show? There's like 50 characters. Come on. Give them a search. <laughs> okay, basically, I'll just go off of it. Show me what you got. Oh, oh Rick and yeah, Morty. Yeah, Rick and Morty. The big hits. Yeah. Yes. Show, show me what you got. Yeah, you gave me such like a vague question like, uh, <laughs> there's a couple of cartoons on Cartoon Network. Basically, I'm like, wow, basically you, just, you just need to get... You have to get it to where you gotta get it to the big heads. And go. I like what you got. Yeah, good okay. job. Yeah. So, exactly. so in that case, you 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 may even not be able to keep Mantha because you have to pay him this year. Yeah. So, is it one of those where Nashville takes a shot at Mantha, keeps Turris, and gets rid of Benino? Yeah. We'll <laughs> see. I mean, it's one of those. We'll Possible. see. It's well. It's a way yeah, to we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens after that whole uh, supposed him storming out the locker room. Again, supposed. supposed. If he was just going out there to do the happy dance, or something happened in his personal life, who knows? He, I don't know. Right? For all we know, his wife could be pregnant, and, and he, he just supposed, found out. Who knows it? Supposed. Yeah. Uh, allegedly. Know. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe the bathroom in the locker room was full, and he had hey, to pee. <laughs> hey, yeah, if anybody, if any of us guys know, if there's a full locker room bathroom, you, you mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. the danger zone. It could be one of many reasons, but we'll we'll keep an ear open for if anything does come of it. Then again, we're gonna be pretty much silent for the rest of the week after this video drops because a lot's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah we're gonna do a complete week. breakdown on Monday, so. Yeah. Trust me, Monday's an off day for us, and yes. we're still going to be here. Yeah, we're probably we might even go live. If what anything, you, if anything, we did last year. Why not this year? If anything does affect the the Nashville side of things, we'll try to post as but much. But if as something we can. big just happens in the NHL in general, we we'll touch yeah. on it. Why not? Because yeah. it'll eventually affect the Predators. But yeah, that's true. But I think with anything that's directly affecting the the yeah, Nashville we'll pipeline, yeah, we'll obviously be on top yeah. of it. We'll yeah, because we'll, we'll, that's our priority. You're saying. Yeah, our top priority is making sure of what Nashville does and keeping a safe zone for ourselves. Now, as much as we like, you know, Grandland and Smith and Gavaldi. If they gotta go, they gotta go. If they're getting traded, they're getting traded. We know it's the nature of the beast. Is Ellie on this list or? No. No, but again, there's so much. Yeah, there's so much. That nobody sees coming. There's so much talk about him, though, being involved in possible trade. And like you guys were saying earlier, when there's smoke, there's fire. Yep. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. And Detroit's known for taking on bad contracts. It's just <laughs> what they do. Sort of wild, apparently. So what do we got left, Dan? Uh, one last thing with some breaking news yesterday regarding the Avalanche. Yeah. Oh? Yeah, they have, on injured reserve right now, uh, most likely out for the rest of the year, Phil Grubauer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew about that. Um, there's talks about them going and acquiring Carey Price. Uh, that would be 
What? Yeah. What? This is speculatory, right? Yeah. But what? Would, would, how would you like that? You get two Montreal goalie trades and they both take you to, what if they won a cup again? Oh my god. Patrick Wall would be doing the happy dance. <sighs> That's... Hey, what was that, uh, what's up with Rant, man? Um, out for four to eight weeks with a broken collarbone. Yeah. I heard that come over to us. And Nenzik Kadri and Matt Calvert are both sidelined with injuries. Well, Dan, you just gave me food for thought for the rest of the night. Yeah. See, I just figured I'd bring that to your attention. And here's the question for the Avalanche. Do you buy sitting in third place in the Central Division? With the Avalanche? Yeah, that's a good... Hmm. Again, if they really want that top spot... Like, it's just... I guess it's a measure of how much do they want to be top of the division. Because I don't see them crossing the Blues. That's the thing. And the Blues have been falling, too. So it's kind of like a grab ball. Here's the kicker. If if Nashville can't catch, they can probably catch that third spot if they keep, if they pick up points in almost every yeah. game. Again, like I said with, uh, a couple videos back, uh, the focus for Nashville is just wild card. Don't even think about, like, don't even worry about the, the, the Central Division race. I'm not saying forget about it completely. That's not... Just, that may be our only option at one point. Yeah. But, you know, that's just where we're at. Right. And if you're just on the outside looking in, be glad you're on the outside looking in. Yeah. Because you just missed, which means you get a lottery pick. Yeah. Exactly. No matter what the situation is, you could end up picking in the top 15. Except picking in the top 15 you. gives you a good spot. Mm -hmm. And it makes you able to move. In that, in that position, you can move up with what Nashville has in their pipeline. Right. I don't like the lottery system. I haven't liked it for the NBA or NHL, but I deal with it. Yeah, yeah. the NFL has the best thing. If you suck, you're number one. And then, you know, the better you are, the lower But, you're. however, in this case, it does prevent tanking. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Although, like, the NBA is pretty... But you're still going to have 15 teams tanking for a ping-pong ball. We can be honest, Dan. The NBA is the worst with the lottery. Yeah, yeah, because they Because they you actually can, rigged you can, the lottery, You too. can fully tank not on this thing and, and not get a... But they rigged the lottery. Yeah, you well. can fully tank the NBA lottery and still get away with it. Yeah, I know. The NBA is too rigged for me to talk about. Anyways, let's go. Yeah, so we are from Milwaukee to Nashville. Where's my sponsorship shield? Can I make it appear? Can I make it appear? Ah, the magic fingers. There it is. 2002 West Howard Avenue. Check out our friends at Hockey Locker. Awesome. I did our commercial backwards. Sorry, <laughs> for, sorry for my Yoda moment. HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Locker of hockey. You must go. <laughs> All right, um, so you can call them at 414-800-7585, or you can visit them at 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We are from Milwaukee to Nashville. This was our trade tracker. Uh, final one we're doing. Anything else you see from us revolving trades will be about Nashville. Yep. So from this point until Monday, probably about 5 in the afternoon, unless yeah. Nashville makes a move, I'm Daniel, this is Chris, and this is Matt. Yay. We all want to get the heck out of here. Yes. Peace. Later, guys. Bye.